Hello everybody, I hope this message finds you well wherever you are. I am really glad to be with you all for our third paper on Philippians, considering a text in its literary and canonical context. And as we learned from the last paper, Philippians 2, 5 through 11 is really the theological heart of Paul's letter to the Philippians. And while I was rereading it, I found two aspects or characteristics, if you will, of Christ's humanity that are especially prominent. The first is humility in service of others. The second is suffering for future exaltation and the glory of God. And so the parallel that I want to draw our attention to for this brief time together, I want to stay within the confines of Philippians and draw your attention to the person of Epaphroditus, who is mentioned in Philippians 2, 25 through 30. He's only mentioned briefly, but I really want to focus on him because after doing a deeper dive into his character for this paper, I really feel as though he is not given enough credit. So Epaphroditus, like Paul and Jesus, exemplifies humility in how he serves others. He maintains their own interests above his own. And I think this is done in two specific ways. The first is how Epaphroditus is presented by Paul. In verse 25, Paul says, Epaphroditus is my brother and co-worker, your messenger and minister to my need. So Epaphroditus isn't introduced by who he is, but instead how he served others, specifically Paul and the Philippians. But Epaphroditus' human identity is defined by his relationship to other people, and I think that is a huge testament to just how much Epaphroditus is concerned with the needs of other people. And the second place I saw this come out was Epaphroditus, as we know from the text, went to Rome to deliver a monetary gift from the Philippians to Paul, and as a result, he becomes sick and is close to death. But it's not the fact that he is close to death that is really striking, but it's his response to this in verse 26. So Paul records this, speaking about Epaphroditus. For he has been longing for all of you and has been distressed because you heard that he was ill. So Epaphroditus' first concern is not with his own demise. It's not with his own death or the fact that he is dying. But it's instead with the sorrow and the panic that the news of his sickness would cause other people. And then it shouldn't come as a surprise that in addition to this, in addition to just recovering from being on the brink of death, Epaphroditus is willing to once again go through the same travel to return to Philippi in verse 28 in order that the Philippians may rejoice at seeing him again and that Paul may be less anxious. And so through these examples, we really see that all of Epaphroditus' actions are entirely motivated by the well-being of other people. And additionally, Epaphroditus' near-death experience, so his suffering, is clearly marked as purposeful as verse 30 says, he came close to death for the work of Christ. Christ's and God's exaltation is also exemplified in verse 27, where it says, but God had mercy on him. So Epaphroditus is about to die, but God had mercy on him, meaning that Epaphroditus' suffering or his death served as the means by which God was able to reveal himself to other people and ensure that Epaphroditus was able to continue his work spreading the gospel. So those are my thoughts, and I am looking so forward to hearing what you all have to say. Maybe you had some similar thoughts, but I will talk to you all in the forum.